Perfect. Cool, man. So uh, let's jump into it anyway. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So I want to set the scene a bit. Um, you know, many of our UK listeners might recognize you. They might, you know, know a bit about your background and, and you know, culture in the UK. But, you know, a lot of our listeners are from America as well. So what was it, you know, what was your upbringing like what was your environment like what did your what were your teachers opinions of you at the time what habits did you have growing up what was growing up like for Ricky Norwood Ooh, growing up you, you, we're going right back to the start um right to the okay start. <laughs> well I'm, I'm an East London boy born in East Lo- in East London and uh, my, my my dad's um my dad's a scaffolder uh and my mum is um she's a housewife but now she was she's she's a carer uh, mum's from kenya nairobi um and dad's from bethnal green east london <laughs> and um so growing up with like in, in a mixed cultured house like there's always something going on so it's like whether that was like music my my kind of my taste in music is mixed um you know like films opinions and stuff like that so growing up in east london in in a mixed um household um was it, it was adventurous um but there was a lot of ups and downs like um and the ups wasn't so so much to do with like money or like an outing or it was more to do with like good times the sun's out we're getting a pizza in or something like that you know so um but yeah you know like growing up at that time um there were there were tough times like you know uh, there was many a times that me and my mum and dad were, were not together so there was times that mum was you know like was dealing with very little money to kind of deal with bills and the house and food and stuff and and um you know she 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 was a gourmet chef at making 128 dishes out of one packet of potatoes do you know what i mean that would last the whole week you know and um so but 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 living through those times um like the one thing that we was taught was to appreciate everything like to appreciate everything to appreciate the from from the littlest biscuit to like the the biggest present or whatever the case may be um so it was all about appreciation for what you had rather than you know longing for what you didn't have or worrying about what you know your your mate had next door or you know your your friend at school or something like that so it wasn't worrying about that it was about like appreciating what you had and like even so if if i give you an example my my uh lovely nan has now passed on um but she used to like she used to get get us the worst christmas jumpers you know like a grandma worst type of itchy 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 like even the design was poor like the, the the choice of colors in the jumper was poor you know like like there's so many things but like it's it, for me it was a gift from my nan so i appreciated it and i loved it and it wasn't something that where i was like you know i ever tried to show a disappointed face or tone or anything like that i would rip it open you know what i mean and be like ah oh, amazing oh fantastic you know what i mean and, because I knew that it came from her heart, you know, she gave, she didn't give it to be spiteful. She gave it because it was Christmas time and she thought it'd be great for us all to wear it around, around, around the house, you know? So it's about appreciating the little things. Um, like that, that was like one of the main things growing up, one of the main lessons growing up. Hmm. How do you think that that sort of sense of gratitude has, has served you in, in your career? Is that something you still do now practice that gratitude for, for the things you have and the things that, you know, you didn't used to uh, have, but now you may have given the opportunities. Yeah. I mean, I mean, gratitude is key. Mm. Gratitude is key in life. I think for everyone, uh, it doesn't matter what status you, you are financially, you know what I mean? Or, or, or your standing within your community. I think, I think it's key to, to appreciate and, and to have gratitude for every little thing that you have, because at the end of the day, you work hard for it. and um it's like it, it it can become tough okay so i i will tell you how gratitude helped but i can tell you also where gratitude can hurt as well or can harm 
or when people take advantage, you know, people take advantage of you being gracious. So people will, will try and kind of push you or prod you and, or when you're on a downtime, when you're, when you're not getting the auditions or the parts or you're not moving in the direction that you want to, to move in, it's hard to be, to, to have gratitude for what you have because at that moment you believe that you don't have anything. And it's at those key moments that you then have to, again, after you're through your emotional haze, kind of, I have to sit down and then realize what you do have. Like realize that the roof over your head, you know, we, we've paid rent this week. Realize that our heating's on, you know, like realize that, okay, we're, we're not going out to the restaurant tonight, but I'm still, you know, I'm still cooking you steak and chips, you know, like I'm, I'm you know, so um, it's in those downtimes. I know it can be hard to find gratitude and, and to be appreciative of what you do have. But those are the, those are the key times because the, the big, things that happen you know like I'm lucky enough to have like won awards and gone to award ceremonies and stuff like that and the big things happen in such a bright flash and they happen so quickly that it's really hard to kind of appreciate what it what it is and kind of embrace that moment um it, it, it happens so quick that you're you're in a whirlwind and everybody's happy and everybody's smiling and then it's poof it's gone it's the next day and you've got to carry on again um, so, so it's really easy to miss the big things in your life, the, the big things that you should be grateful for. And uh, sometimes people kind of just dwell in, in their, in the, in, in the bad times or the negative times in their life and can't get their head above the water. But that is where I've kind of learned my best lessons. You know, that is where I've learned my best lessons. I mean, you know, there, there's been times where I'm, I'm tired of being an actor, you know, like there's been times in my life where I've been tired of, you know, I right, having to get up, having to le learn the script, having to, you know, like learn the accent or, or, you know, for hopefully like I don't have to learn a song because if we have to learn a song, then I'm stressing, you know, then I'm sweating and I'm stressing and there's a lot going on. But, you know, like I'm so lucky to be able to live my dream. Yeah, to, you know, to, to get an audition, to go for the job, to, you know, pay my rent with the money that I've earned through what I love to do. That I, I had to kind of find the love again for what I wanted. I had to find the gratitude again for everything, you know, and, um, and, and everything that I hold dear to me. So it's like every time you have a dip, dips are there, to, dips are there as a wake up call. Dip, dips are there to shake you up dips are there to sh to let you know that you wasn't right because sometimes we believe we're right all the time so to have a dip or to make a few mistakes and you might feel that you're at the bottom here or you might feel oh i, I don't know what i'm gonna do i don't know how i'm gonna climb up well that ain't as bad as you believe it to be all it is is a lesson in life that teaches you that we're human we make mistakes and oh, okay take responsibility for how you've got to the bottom of this mountain and what are you going to do to climb back up it now you have all the skills you know how to climb back up this mountain like you know the route but do, do you have the motivation do you have the will do you have the fight to get back up and go again do you know what i mean with new knowledge you know minding the pitfalls minding the loose rocks on the way up this time you know so that you get further up so yeah, gratitude is key. Gratitude is, 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 is one of the things that we always have to come back to so that we can go forward. You know, being, in, being, being an actor and being in, in the so-called so fame game, you know, um, you, can, you can take things for granted. When people do things for you, when people like, you know, run and get you water or, you know, you're getting makeup done or, you know, it's come here, get in the car, go here, everything's done for you and stuff like that. You can... You, you can forget that it, it can become too normalized and sometimes you need a little shake up to be like wow look where I am right now like you know like you know the car's picking me up I'm jumping on a plane I'm, I'm gonna go film over here for a month and then I'm coming back and like you know the the treatment that is given and and you know the appreciating that is given while you're there. like this is amazing this life is amazing so you have to enjoy every little moment Otherwise, like I say, the big ones, they happen so quick and so fast that you end up missing them. 
I love this, man. I love this idea of gratitude and, and the way you're explaining it is making me reflect a bit because I think about when we started this podcast and we had these goals of, you know, we want to be the the number one pod, personal development podcast in in the UK or, you know, and they had my, we've had our sights set on that goal for so long that, you know, you're climbing the mountain and, you know, those little moments, those little wins on the way up so that, you know, the first time I interviewed a, a New York Times bestseller or, you know, the first time I interviewed someone I was a, a really big fan of or, you know, I mean, now I'm, you know, I'm interviewing Ricky Norwood. I, I, I looked, I was looking through my Twitter actually earlier and I found myself, you know, five years ago when I was 19, I was, um, I was tweeting you about the storyline and EastEnders and, and all this. Wow. I, I know, man. Big fan, big fan. And, um, you know, wow. if you've got your sights set on that, that end goal, you, you can miss those big wins. So I think it is a, a case of, you know, stopping to enjoy the view on the way up the mountain because sometimes the view from halfway up can be just as sweet as the view from the top. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes the, the, the bumps and the scrapes that you've got along the way, the first time up the mountain and the second time up the mountain, they're all there as kind of, like I say, lessons and reminders. I mean, I'll, I'll give you another kind of, uh, I'll give you another example, okay? Like, um, so in quarantine, in lockdown, banana bread has been like one of the hot words, right? But everyone's talking about banana bread. Colbert's talking about banana bread, like uh, Trevor Noah's talking about, but everyone's talking about banana bread, right? Everyone, everyone. So I'm like, okay, we're going to make some banana bread, all right? We're, we're going to do this. Let's do this. So the first time we made the banana bread, me and my missus, we made it. The first one that came out, not only did it collapse, but when we cut into it, it was, it was soggy dough all the way up to the right at the top. So much so that, you know, you can just about pick the tops off, enjoy that, but it's got to go. The whole thing's got to go. The second time we've done it, um, and within the same week, mind you, the second time we've done it, again like still there's some bits off once it came out like it was still kind of hard it was better but it was still it was still not not precise you know what i mean it still wasn't wasn't perfect and then today i i done one because my little sister uh was coming around to see, uh, to see me so I, I i wanted to make her some um some banana bread so i was like okay i'll get up in the morning and i and, and i'll do it so this morning when i done it because of all of the previous mistakes that I'd already made in the last two, like I was very conscious about the mistakes and I was very conscious about, okay, well, let's do this, let's do that. Even when it comes down to timing or the baking temperature, all of this was trial and error. And today's banana bread, I know it's banana bread, but today's banana bread was like tremendous, like massive loaf, didn't sink. It was baked the whole way through. Like, you know, my little sister, she loves it. Like we've been eating it today. Like it's, it, but but it's the same. It's the same type of metaphor for life. Like, don't be so down on yourself or negative about the bad things that are happening. Some people believe that rock bottom means that you have to stay at rock bottom. Rock bottom ain't a bad thing. And I know that some people that are there are going, you know, or looking at me confused right now or squinting, you know what I mean, at their, at, at, at their earphones or, you know, whatever the case may be. But it's not that bad. It's a reset. All rock bottom is, is a reset. So all of the lessons that you believed that, you know, um, were getting you somewhere, like you got to take the strength from the ones that got you there. And then the hype, the rubbish around it, that ended up making you fall down this mountain. Like you need to recognize those, not, not, use it as blame or not use it as an excuse, but take responsibility in, in what you done in that moment to get you at the bottom of this mountain. The moment that you have that epiphany, the moment that you go, oh, okay, I was wrong there, or I shouldn't have handled it this way, or, you know, admit the mistake. Mistakes, everybody in life is scared of like admitting that they were wrong or that they made a mistake. There is nothing bad in that. It shows strength, it shows maturity, it shows understanding, and it shows that you've learned a lesson because you can talk about it and you can now move forward. You know, the, the more you kind of shy away from the mistakes that you've made, like, and, and not face them. And this is just for you. It's not like you have to do this with your friends or your, for you. If you haven't faced them for you and seen the truth for yourself, you're never going to get past it. And that's what happens when they, you know, when you, 
continue to make the same mistake over and over and over again. It's because you haven't learned that lesson. You haven't faced that lesson for yourself and you're not prepared to kind of take the respon responsibility to go, okay, that was my fault. That was my fault. That was my fault. I've got to stop blaming him, him and her. Let's get this cracking. I know what direction I need to be going in and little bit by little bit. And it's not a run up the hill. It's a little bit by little bit you get back to being yourself and, and, and an even better version of yourself so you can conquer the next mountain that, that mm. you're facing. I love this, man. It's, it's, you know, the way you're putting it is so beautiful. And, and who knew that, you know, the grand reflection of life is banana bread. It's, uh, you know, Warren you know analogy. That, Lewis? Exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, but this is what I'm saying about life. Life, life whatever it is, whether it be banana bread or... or you know, a, a philosophical metaphor. It doesn't matter. Like, you've got to take the lessons from it. The, when that ban banana bread came out and it was, like, blooming and it was, it, it was gorgeous the whole way through, like, there was a sense of pride. There was a sense of achievement. But I was happy because I fell down the mountain twice before with the rubbish banana bread because I, I, I then knew what those mistakes were and I wasn't making those mistakes again, you know? So it's the same, man. You've got, you got to take every lesson in life there there are so many lessons in life sometimes we we spend too much time scrolling or like you know like streaming episode after episode that we forget to kind of look at ourselves and work on ourselves we can it's easy to kind of jump into kind of unconscious uh tapping out you know but sometimes you gotta like you know shake yourself a little bit and and, and fa face the questions that you know need to be faced because everybody loves an excuse everybody loves an excuse mm. you know we all do you know so it's time it, it, time the time for excuses are gone look look at us we're in 2020 we're in quarantine we're in lockdown everything has been taken away from everybody when it comes down to work and movement you know it's been taken away from everyone regardless you know and it's a leveler so now is the time to use this time to answer the questions that have been holding you back so that you can jump higher, you can jump further. It's not for anybody else. It's not to prove your partner wrong or your, your old drama teacher wrong. It's not about them. It's about you. You can use it as motivation, but it's not about them. Don't make it about them. Invest in you and the rest will come. Hmm. I love this, man. And, and one thing I really wanted to ask you um, you know, being an actor, and I've, I've spoken to one or two other actors on this show before, is w when did you know um, when you were younger that that conventional route of school, university, nine to five job, uh, you know, being someone else, uh, be, someone else being your boss, following orders, doing, you know, mundane tasks. When did you know that that life wasn't for you and that you wanted to follow the unconventional route that was you know risky um when oh it's that it's tough to answer when but i can say like i've always been encouraged to be in performance mm. um being being like so my nan she used to take me to um covent garden and back way back in the day they used to have break dancers out there and they used to have freestylers out there and they used to put on like little shows you know um and but the street dancers and the break dancers would come down from pineapple studio and they wouldn't come with cardboard they'd come with their mats you know and they would they would dance left right and center and they would wow the crowd as a kid like uh, like from what i've been told uh like two or three as soon as i was walking basically so my nan used to take me and i used to sit there and they supposedly they recognize me they would know because i would been there every week or every time they do it or whatever the case may be but um they would recognize me and they'd be like oh little man like ricky come 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 and i'd be excited and i'd go up there and pretend to do my break dancing and like i used to spin around in my head but it was like baby version so i used to put my head on the floor and then just run around my head and everybody used to go crazy like the crowd used to go mad and i was just like I used to get up like you know like the break dancer <laughs> And everyone used to go mad. And I was like, oh my gosh, well, you know, and that, that was the beginning. That was the beginning of kind of me enjoying performance, me loving, like, you know, starting to fall in love with dance and, and the, the applause and that kind of, um, you know, that repertoire with, with, with the audience. 
So it, it started way, way early. Like I never thought about another job. It wasn't like I was one of those kids that was like, oh, I want to be an astronaut. Like that was just never in me. It was just like performance and creating and, 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 and going to after school clubs and stuff like that. And, you know, that was, that was all I was interested in. It was, it, I think it was like, maybe when I get, got to options. So maybe like year nine, year 10 um, in school, uh, which would probably be around 13, 14 um years old um it was probably around then that i i knew that all i wanted to do was was be in the performance world i didn't know what i was going to do um obviously i wanted to at, at that stage I, I i was dancing a lot so i i just wanted to kind of you know be as good as i could be but also kind of be on tours, be on dance tours and, and be successful. You know, I wanted to be successful with, with what I was doing um, and what I love to do. And like, it was at that point where picking options because the, the, the school that I went to, there were no kind of performance-based options, right? So yes, there was drama as an option, but there wasn't no like, you know, like, uh, all right, cool, we're going to have acting school that will prepare you for acting college or drama you know like it wasn't that it was just an acting class you know like from school um but it was when i was picking the options that i saw that there was no option for creativity or anything like that that i was like well okay this is the point where i knew that it's something from you know my from from the top of my head to the bottom of my toe that i have to be kind of wholehearted with and i knew that if this is what i wanted to do then i had to do it it had to be a choice that I wanted to do because it had to be outside of school and it had to be, you know, like some people might think it's extra lessons. Let's say, you know, you've just done school. Who wants extra lessons? It wasn't that. It was like, well, I finished doing what you guys asked me to do and what I need to do. Now I'm going to do what I want to do. Do you know what I mean? So I think it was around maybe 13, 14 that there was a conscious point where I was like, okay, cool. Well, I, I don't really want to be in an office. I know like, that life ain't really formed. I mean, you know, we try, I tried it. I tried like work experience and stuff like that, and, but it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. So um, I've got to say it was around then. And, and I remember there was a, so I remember a, a Christmas job. I remember during the a December, I was working at the Theatre Royal Stratford East as an usher. And I was working at Dixon's, um, which is an ele electronical store um and like dixon's the, the the wage was better but it was the most mundane boring job i have ever had like trying to trying to force somebody to buy a plug adapter that's just got off the train like you know the boss is like yeah go sell i'm like sell him what if he wants it he'll pick it up he'll find me and i'll sell it but it was all about, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it was just like knowing about computer specs and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh, this is, this is not, this is not, this is, this is not me, you know? Um, and I remember like giving that up to go for a lesser paid job in the theater role, but, and, and as an usher, but I preferred to do that because I was, firstly, I was in a theater. Secondly, I was closer to everything that I wanted to be a part of, you know? So I was closer to directors. I was closer to other actors. I was closer to the shows itself. I got to watch the shows that was on um, at the time that I was there a lot more than anybody else. So I, I would end up watching different details. I'd watch different details from actors. You know, if I had an emotional response from one of the actors or from, from a performance, the second time that I watched it or the third time I'd watch it, I'd try and work out how and, how and why they had that effect on me. So I try and work out how they planted the seeds to get to get my emotions, so that by the time they that they kind of revealed whatever the thing was that I had that emotional response, you know, and as well as people sitting around me, I, I would start to work out where they started doing things to to plant that seed, so that it became a flower at the moment of crescendo, sort of thing, you know. So um, yeah, that, like I preferred that. It was more of what I wanted. It was more the, the, the people there I liked, you know, the, 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 the conversations that I had with the conversations that I wanted to have, um, 
you know, and it was very, the theater and acting is very inclusive. You know, it didn't, it didn't matter whether you was white, black, mixed race, gay, trans, it didn't matter about any of that. It mattered about, you know, like how talented you are, you know, like, you know, you, you can sing, you can dance, you can act, or you was great at lighting, or you was great at, at, at like directing, like, that's what it was about it wasn't about anything else and that's another the reason that I love acting and I love you know and I love the, the world it's because it's always been ex inclusive and it's always been a world in which it allows you to be expressive no matter who you are or where you're from you know it's like let me hear your story let me hear your story you know so that's you know, another reason why I love it would you say that you know you're the type of person that you know you see all a lot of people who you know work jobs they don't really care about and as long as they get to friday that's good enough for them they're happy to trade five days of their life in a job they don't like with no meaning for two days in return where they can have fun it's that five for two trade are you the type of person that through finding meaning and purpose and genuine happiness in what you do you're trying to sort of get that friday feeling in every day of the week because you're doing a job that means something to you absolutely absolutely but that just because i'm looking for every day to be friday doesn't mean that every day is friday hmm. you know we, we have to deal with i have to deal with the down days i have to deal with putting out the you know the the, the garbage on a monday you know i've got this not every day is a friday so having that putting that pressure on you as well or or not even that like or, or when you don't have the greatest day or when you don't have a very productive day, to put that pressure on you that, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, like, that's wrong as well. We all need, we, we, we all need balance, you know? So I, I, don't, um, I don't kind of judge or kind of um, look at anybody differently because they work their nine to five and then they live their life on the weekend. Or, or after work on a Thursday, because you know the you know the weekend starts on a Thursday. Um, but they're doing what they, they're doing what they need to do to to it, they, like you said. There's a payoff, you know. There's a payoff. They're going, okay, cool. I'm doing this so that I can get to that. Some people don't even have that, you know. What when you're in work, you want to find something. There's there's a reason that you're in it. So you want to find intention and purpose in as much as you can you want intention and, and purpose in as much as you can including your work so you might not like 95 percent of your work but there might be five percent of it which is like i don't know creative you know uh you know you might have to design a flyer or you, there might be something creative about it so if that that's the part that you like you know like make sure that when it comes to that part that you're not consumed by the 95 that came before it, you know, you've got to take every moment for what it is. Um, one of the biggest things about like stress and anxiety, when it comes down to work and doing something that you don't want to do is that people feel forced. They feel trapped in, in a rhythm that they feel like they can't get out of. It takes that, but the, the, there's also a settling as well. So there's, there's also a part of you that's kind of like you're, you're trapped and you're settled in the kind of aspect of paying rent, you know, getting, buying food, buying groceries, doing this, that, you know, get, getting the checklist done. But you, you have to within you, even if it's like, let's say it's not at work, you have to, once you come home, indulge in something that, that, that you're passionate about or that brings you joy. There is a lot of people that lets work and lets negativity consume them and they miss out on joy, you know, and they miss out on kind of whatever it is, you know, like I, I really enjoy football, you know, and sometimes my team will frustrate me and I'll shout at the TV and I'll get upset and I'll get a little bit frustrated. But that, like, I, that vehicle has allowed me to express those emotions. Now that they're out of my system, I don't bring them into, I don't bring them in my, in, into my day to day. Mm. I've, I've done it. I've expressed it. It's out, out of me. So now I can go on about my best day, you know? And it's the same way that uh, when I talk about joy, 
like you, you have to have something outside of work or outside of the checklist you know that that allows you to kind of let loose you know what i mean like don't put so much pressure on yourself like again appreciate and 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 be, be thankful for everything that you do, like that you do have and you know what i mean and and take that time to have some joy that's not what it's about just just you know embr- embrace your joy mm. Before I, uh, I don't know where we went there, Lewis. I don't know where we went there. I was going around in circles <laughs> up until we got to Joy, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember Joy." I remember. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Before I jump on to the next question, I, you know, just a quick sidetrack. The way you were talking about your team disappointing you is that Arsenal by any chance? No, never, never. No? I don't support them lot. Who's I'm, your team? I'm Tottenham. I, I was, I'm Tottenham. I'm Tottenham. So the the the, re, the the reason that they um, look, look I, I mean, it's it's not a Tottenham hat but it's still Spurs, Spurs. So. Um, but the reason I chat about disappointment is because obviously like you, you, you've got me onto football now so this is your fault <laughs> alright but you know uh, I, I was in love with Pochettino and the Pochettino team and the Pochettino f- f- philosophy and then ever since he was sacked it's, it's, been a, it's been a crazy season for Tottenham and, and what's going on so but in every every single football team, even Man City right now, people are you know screaming at, at the TV at, at, at them. So it's no drama. The the screaming is part of the joy. The screaming is is part of the cheer. You know what I mean? It, you you couldn't have jubilation if you didn't have despair at the same time. And uh, I support West Brom, so I'm still waiting for that uh, joy part. You know, it's just West uh, Brom. What well, they're doing well this season? Were they doing well? Yeah, second in the championship, but you know. Who knows what's going to happen now, right? I know, um, I know. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, I want to talk a bit about the process of, of pursuing your dream because okay. I spoke to um, an actress called Alicia. She was one of the stars in um, High School Musical, the Disney uh, right. the films. And she talked about having to you know sacrifice a lot and you know there was a big social cost to achieving her dreams so she had to drop out of her university degree to pursue it she had to you know um leave one or two friendships behind move her life to a different location what has been the process like um in pursuing your dream in terms of social cost work ethic what sacrifices have you made growing up um wow well i mean i mean it's tough it's tough to answer that question because the thing is that it's like you say sacrifices but because i wanted to do it i I wanted to sacrifice that to to get you know the other thing that sometimes in my head it's like it wasn't so much of a sacrifice, you know? Um, but it's like, whether it was hanging out with friends, you know, you know, the majority of the time I, I would have uh, dance rehearsals during the week. So there'd be dance, show, dance rehearsals during the week. Sometimes there'll be a drama rehearsals during the week. If I had a show um, booked, then sometimes the rehearsal period would be every day. So I wouldn't get to see my friends or hang out or anything like that because I was in the rehearsal room for three, four hours. Now, like, you, you, you can talk about kind of sacrifice. So I, I sacrificed play, maybe playing football with, with my mates at that, at that point. Um, but I, I, I preferred to be in the rehearsal room regardless. So that's why it's hard for me to kind of, you know what I mean, put, put yeah. it into context for, your, for, for your question. But, um, it, you know, like, you have to, you have to, 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 to gain what you want in life, you have to sacrifice some things and you, you have to kind of see what's really important to you. And, and this, this job does, and this business does do that to you. It does force you to kind of go, okay, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm working for Sky One, you know, so uh, m- maybe I can't, m- maybe I can't, go out on the weekend or for instance an uh, an easy example is is footballers right so footballers we're just talking about football footballers they earn whatever they earn a week but as soon as they're off the pitch they can't do nothing because there's a camera in their face all the time so 
if they go and have a drink at the bar, there's a camera there. Do you know what I mean? Oh, look, this certain footballer's having a drink. Or if they're having a meal with two, you know, two of their mates, it's like, oh, well, he's, you know, he's got two girlfriends. People are looking to make up headlines. People are looking to, to try and bring those guys down. So, you know, they would, in, 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 in their world, they gave up, let's say, their childhood. Like, you know, from 14, 13, 14, these guys are in youth training and youth training uh, clubs and setups and stuff like that. So, you know, they might not have been able to go out with their mates or, ha- you know, um, go out to the you know, after school dances and, and, and have a little dance with Sarah. You know, they missed out on Sarah. Mark is now six months, you know, serious relationship with Sarah now. Sarah ain't even looking your way no more, you know, but you've got to go training in the morning. So let's set the alarm, you know? So th- 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 there's a really easy example of kind of putting it into context of, of we all have to sacrifice something to get the things that we want. And, but, but if, you, if you look at the sacrifice, you'll realize it ain't that big of a sacrifice. Mm. Socially or, or mentally, it might be massive, but it ain't that big. You're, you're giving it up to do something that you really want to do. It sort of reminds me of um, there's a saying by this guy in the personal development space called Eric Thomas, and he talks about his saying is you've got to sacrifice what you want right now for what you want the most, and I guess that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Yeah, Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Another thing, um, well, another topic that came up in my discussion with Alicia was um, this idea of well, she said if you want to be an actor and you don't like rejection or failure, then it's not the industry for you. Um, Yeah. Have you dealt, well, what initial rejection did you deal with before catching uh, a break? And and how did you react to that rejection? Did you, you know, did you wallow in it or did you use it as as motivation to kick on? How did you react to failure and uh, rejection? It's uh, re- rejection is is part of the game, and you have to you have to be in love with rejection, and you have to make rejection a friend of yours um, when you're in this, because the majority of the time, it's it's got nothing to do with you. It's because you wasn't two inches taller, or you know you, you haven't got the right eye color, or you don't you don't match up to the female that we've just cast. There's a hundred and one different reasons behind the rejection. And depending on what stage in life that you're in, you handle it differently. So the beginning, the beginning stages of life, you, everything is new. Everything is exciting. Um, the, the, maybe the first one, the first rejection you get, is almost there's a little heartbreak because you, you're thinking, oh, oh, I'm ready, I'm ready. You know, you get excited about the audition and you go and you do it and you come out and it's like, well, of course they're going to call me. Well, of course they're going to call me. I mean, it's three weeks later, of, of course they're going to call me, you know, um, and then they don't call. So the first one sometimes can be heart, a little heartbreaking, but it is, like, like I say, it has to become a friend. And every time um, that I, I got rejected from a part or I, I didn't get that part, I would come back and kind of try and work out where my weaknesses were, you know, um, especially at the beginning, I'd be like, oh, okay, or may- maybe I messed up there, or maybe I messed up here. Um, okay, okay. But it's all a very exciting journey. Get up and go, get up and go, get up and go. Um, when you get the audition that you really, really want and you don't get it, yes, it can be disappointing, but by this time, in this middle period, you take it on the chin. So, for instance, um, before I got Easties, um, I think it was maybe two weeks, three weeks before that, I'd done an audition for Misfits. Do you remember Misfits on yeah. E4? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I had an audition for Misfits, and I'm I'm a big comic book fan and a bit of a comic book geek. I've got I've got comic art around my house and stuff like that. I've got a ton of comic books and stuff like that. And and um, I read this the 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 scenes that they gave me, and I read the synopsis, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is perfect. This is, I would love this. And uh, I went to the audition. The audition was an improvised audition. So the uh, person would like, they'll just chuck a scenario at you or you just had to make it up. Yeah. You just got like p- pure basics of um, 
what your character, what they were looking for in your character. And then it was like, just improvise, just go for it and see what happens. So it was a bit of a weird audition, but I, um, I got a recall for that. I went, uh, I went and done the recall. And then after that, I didn't get another call, but that was one that I really, really wanted. So when that didn't come, um, I was disappointed a little bit. But then I think it was a week later, I'd done the Easties audition, the EastEnders audition. And then suddenly, this was perfect for me. Suddenly I started reading the, 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 the part of Fatboy and all his traits and where he was from and what he, and I knew this character inside out. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is perfect, this is perfect. And I, I remember doing the audition on a Wednesday and by the Friday, so like I, I basically finished the, the audition like Wednesday, maybe three, four o'clock in the afternoon. By the Friday, 10, 11 o'clock in, uh, in the morning, um, I got a call saying, yeah, you got the part, right? So I went crazy. I banged every door in my house at the time. I banged every, every, every uh, cupboard and, you know, every pot and every pan. I made noise and made sure everybody knew that, yes, yes, thank goodness, I got the damn part, right? Um, but again, there's lesson in that. There's, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes what you think that you want or what you need is not. Sometimes the door that you think that you need to go through to get to the other side, it's not the right door. If it shuts in your face or if you stub your toe on the way through and you're like, oh, maybe this is not the door for me. Like, you, you can't be stressing about that so much because like they say, like that old cliche, as one door shuts, another one opens, you know? And that's exactly what happened. And, and that was the exact, like, um, lesson that I took from that point. You know, I wanted misfits. I was like, this is perfect for me. It's everything that I'm interested in. And then boom, EastEnders turned up and in the character of Fats and everything that Fats brings and everything that I could bring to Fats, you know? So I was like, oh my gosh. And then we got the part, you know? Um, there is an, a, the last section, I say the last section, but uh, the third section of auditioning where it's like, so, okay. So now I'm, I'm out, out of EastEnders. Now I'm auditioning again. Now, well, Auditioning again after you've been in a continuing drama for, I mean, I was in it for just under six years, right? So around six years-ish. Um, so I, I, I hadn't had an audition in six years. So starting up and going again was really, it, it, was, a, it, it was hard at first. It was, it was very nervy. It was like, I, I, I didn't remember what this world was about. I had to make a few mistakes again. Um, and the the rejections that I got after this, they started so I mean, this mixed in with depression at the time and there, there was little dips that I was having at the time. But I started to believe that every rejection now, instead of it being my friend or instead of it being a lesson to be learned, what well, every rejection was like, oh, like am I am I rubbish? Like, like can I act? Like, is this something that I should be like you start questioning yourself. You start questioning, like, it is, it, was it a fluke that I got that job or, you know, and or you start questioning and, and start kind of breaking down all of the strengths that you do have, all of the things that you do have to bring to the table. You start destroying them yourself. And, and that was a part of the process that I started going to. Because even though there were some uh, auditions that I went for that I didn't even want. Like, I didn't, I didn't want them. Like, I, 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 didn't like, I didn't like the character. I didn't like the script. I didn't like I, I didn't like it, but it was a point where I was like, okay, the agent has sent through this audition. Okay, let's go. Let's try and do what we can do with it. Let's try and you know, let me try and bring some type of life to it where I can feel happy with it, and like not really wanting it, but being like, okay, if it comes, then we'll deal with it. And that audition won't come through. And so when the auditions, like, I didn't get the auditions that I didn't even want or I didn't feel like oh that's when it started that's when I started going crazy I was like well and that's when all the doubt and and all the kind of um all the all, all the demons started popping up from within um about life choices about you know are you an actor about what's happening next and stuff like that and 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 my my, my um my inside belief, like my, my belief in myself, like that started diminishing, you know, my confidence started diminishing. So it, that took a little minute, 
be, before I had to kind of slap slap myself in the face again. Again, when when we talk it like going back to the mountain again, so I I then had to look back and look at the choices that I made since I left EastEnders. Like there were certain things that I was lapsed on. There were certain things that you know there was online forms that I should have filled out ages ago. There was, you know, a, a, a new set of pictures, uh, portfolio pictures that I should have got. There was, there was little niggles that I didn't do, you know? And um, I, because I, I got away with it for so long, I thought I could can continue to get away with it. So it was at that point where I had to, again, um, slap myself in, I mean, one, I jumped into my books, but we'll talk about books in a little while. Um, I'm loving your bookshelf. But I had to slap myself again and kind of see where, in, instead of blaming, see, see where I went wrong, see where the mistakes were that I made and be responsible enough to admit it and then use it, use the answer as motivation to get out of it and to learn that lesson and, and get it past. So little bit by little bit, I started doing that. And then I started taking even more excuses out of my own, uh, you know, like my own repertoire. So. So e even for like, um, there might be a, a part that c comes up and it, it would be in a gym, for instance. And I would be like, well, I know you're not talking to me because I, I, I don't go to the gym. Like, I, I know you're looking for a guy with muscle, you know, like, so that ain't, that ain't going to be me. So then, but instead of just looking at the part, instead of looking at what you need to be focused on, I l focused on all of the rubbish surrounding it. And it was all my own rubbish where it, that I ended up talking myself out of the part where I end up like phoning the agent going, yeah, you know what? I don't think this is for me. And like, I don't, I really don't think this one's for me. You know, like, I don't think, I think you're, I think you're looking, I think you're looking for somebody else. Like, and so you talk, then you start talking yourself out of auditions and out of doing what you love to do. Again, a slap and a wake up call to kind of go, stop, stop living in the excuses because there's no need. If we, if we want to do something, then let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, let, let's start doing, whether, it, whether it's workouts and, and going to the gym, well, I'm not going to do it to be pretentious or to wear that really skinny vest that just about goes over the nipples. I'm not about that life. But, but I do, I do want to be like in a Marvel movie or a Marvel TV series or you know, I do want to be uh, in, in Witcher season two or three. You know, I want to wield a sword. You know, I'd love to be in some sci-fi. I'd love to be in, a, in, in, in some fantasy. Do you know what I mean? I'd love to be in, in stuff that I, I enjoy, you know, that I really enjoy. And sometimes when I enjoy something, it's like I, I don't see myself in it. Because I'm like, oh, I could never be in that. You know, I, I could never be in The Witcher. Like, I, I could never be in Game of Thrones. Who's stopping me? I'm stopping me. Nobody's stopping me. So I'm stopping me. So let's, let's go, let, let's do some workouts or let's go to the gym with intention and purpose. Let's go with, with the intention to get that Witcher job. Let's go with the purpose of being able to wield a sword. Let's go with, with, with the intention of, of wearing spandex and not feeling self-conscious. Do you know what I mean? Like let, let's go so that we can, we, we can swing around on the green green screen and, and, and live that amazing life. Let's do it with that. And if you do it with intention and purpose and you know what your intention and purpose is, well, those press ups are a little bit lighter. You can go for an, you know, an extra half hour when you're doing your, your dumbbells or you, you, can, you can go in and, because you're doing it with intention and purpose. And if you apply intention and purpose to anything in life, then you can achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. Remember, all you need in life is, is a little information time and focus that's it then you can achieve what you need to achieve you know so yeah uh, no man I, I that was a fantastic answer and you almost sounded like a motivational speaker at the end you uh <laughs> you, you got me mo you got me motivated man and um i love i love the honesty you talk um about you know transitioning out of that show and being in the dark because you know you you left these standards which for you know, our overseas listeners is, is the biggest, you know, soap drama in the country. And Ricky played the greatest character in the history of the show, in my opinion. Um, You're too kind. Side note, I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll dig the tweets out. You know, I, I found myself uh, an 18-year-old Lewis tweeting uh, 
the BBC Stenders account telling them what a mistake they'd made by killing Fat Boy oh, off. But bro. I know, man. Oh, um, bro, man. You just like, my heart is like, I'm um, seriously, like, even my, even my eyes teared up a little bit. You, <laughs> that is, that is the sweetest, bro. Like, like that is, see, it, it's crazy because everyone's on the photos and the autographs. But see, this means more to me. Like, that means more to me than, than anything, bro. The fact that this, this East London boy that came from Forest Skate ended up on EastEnders. And I was never supposed to be there for longer than five minutes, Lewis. Mm. I was never supposed to be there for longer than five minutes. When I first turned up, I had, like, you know, I was on E20, which was, like, the internet show. And it was, like, the internet spinoff of EastEnders. And then I transitioned to EastEnders, but I was only supposed to be there for two to three months. And even when I was there, I was only getting like one minute scenes at the end. So there was a lot of things that were geared towards me not sticking around for too long, you know? Um, But I never had that intention. My intention was to be there for at least five years. Mm -hmm. That was my intention from the beginning. So everything that they gave me was a test. Do you know what I mean? So every time they gave me half a page, I'd go, all right, and cool, well, this is a test. Every time they gave me a big scene, I'd go, all right, and cool, this is a test. Um, but the only thing that I wanted to do while I was there was to make sure that I had some type of impact, you know, on, on the people watching this legendary show. You know, this show is like, it's generational. So mum will know it, grandma will know it, granddad will know it, dad will know it and know every storyline, but say to his friends, he doesn't really watch it. He's just there when the missus is watching it, but he tends to know every storyline. So it's like, it's generational, it's, it is massive. So for, for you to say that, you know, I had some type of impact and you know what I mean? You felt like, you felt the need to actually write to the BBC yeah, man. to try and tell them that they made a mistake. That means a lot to me, brother. So thank you so, so much, man. <laughs> yeah. this, this is, that, that, that you, you and people like yourself are, are the reason why I love to do what I do. Love it, man. The world will never know a better duo than Fat Boy and Dot. I'll put it that way. Oh, um, um, you've moved on now, man. You 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 picked up a a big role. Um, I yeah. feel that for actors now, you know, whereas years ago the the scope has changed a bit. Everyone wanted to be in that that Hollywood movie. Everyone wanted to work for you know, um, Warner Brothers, all these big companies. But the scope has changed now, um, where. I think everyone's think you know, yeah, actors, I can't speak for them, but I imagine they're thinking, I want to be in a Netflix original. Netflix is, is taking over. Um, you've landed a, a part in the sequel to The Princess Switch, which was, you know, which is one of the, you know, most raved about originals. And you've jumped into this, you know, this big production thing with all these amazing and talented people. What have you learned yeah. from it working with the people you're working with on that, you know, cream of the crop level now? Um, I, the, the, the first thing that I noticed was that it wasn't a foreign land for me. It was, it was where I belonged. Mm. Um, it didn't feel like I shouldn't be there. It, I didn't feel like an imposter. Like I felt like I should be there. Like, um, you see, when I got the princess switch, um, it was a pivotal time for me. I had just gone through my own type of um regeneration um i was I, I was applying techniques from uh gurus and 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 books and and well-being and motivational things to to get me back on track but then to get me soaring on another level to 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 be resonating on another level and um so the second half of last year, there was a couple of auditions. Um, there was there was one for Bulletproof Two, um, that's on Sky One. That was one that I really really wanted, um, but again didn't get. Um, and then the Princess Switch turned up, and at this point, so I had I had at that point, I had to re- reinvest in me and my my acting brain and you know and, and get acting into my lungs again you know like i said to you like i i started to appreciate my job and the job that i chose um and the, and and i started to appreciate the gift that i've been given with the talent that i have 
So what I ended up doing was I started investing. I started investing in like I I, I got a, a Nancy Bishop um, audition acting book, which is like the new Bible. It's a fantastic book. But I also went to her uh, casting workshop. And just to, just to get my just to get my, my fingers and toes going, and just just to get in a workshop type of thing. Now, b- before, I I probably wouldn't have done that. Yeah, when when I was in the midst of EastEnders and in the midst of guy going to you know this premiere and that premiere, I probably wouldn't have done that because I was wrapped up. I was wrapped up in the world, and I I believe that you know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm at a certain level and I'm I'm good, you know, but. Being, being again, we talk about rock bottom or dropping down a few floors. Be, being, being dropped a little bit or looking up a little bit allows you to get stronger. It, it's like it's, it's like Rocky Three. In in Rocky Three, you know, he had to go to Apollo's gym and he had to learn a new rhythm and he had to learn a new way of doing press ups and a new way of sparring so he could, you know, go and beat up Mr. T. Do you know what I mean? So it was it was it was like that. So when this audition came along, yes, I was nervous, but I was also very ready. I was like, okay, I I I I was starting to apply some techniques that I I, I relearned. I started to apply techniques that I, I that I newly learned, and I went all in with the audition. Um, and like when I got the part, it was there was a lot of relief. There was a lot of relief in there. Like there was a lot of kind of yes. Yes, you know, there was a lot of celebration, but there was a lot of relief in me because I was like, okay, good. <laughs> I'm not rubbish. Like, I knew I wasn't rubbish. I knew it. I told you guys, all of the demons inside, I told all of you I wasn't rubbish, all right? Now get off my shoulder, back up, jump back on your train because I ain't got time for you. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so like I say, so, so that was me going into it. So when I sat around the table, and obviously I'm, I'm sitting uh, with Vanessa and Sam, and uh, who was on Nashville, and you know the, uh, Nick Sager as well. So Nick, um, this guy is just 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 a fantastic human being, and he's living in America right now. But he's an East London boy, born and bred in Forest Gate as well. So he lived like maybe two streets away from me. Um, that I I never met this guy growing up, but. It just so happens that we're both here on this journey together. And I, I don't like to admit it, but I, I am a little bit older than Nick, right? Um, so we, it's a crazy full circle, and this is why I'm telling you. Because when I met Nick, Nick Sega, um, he, like I said, he was from Forest Gate, but the, one of the first shows that he went to see was a show called... The Boys, D A B O Y Z, The Boys. That was at Stratford Theatre Royal, um, and it was um, it was a remixed version of the The Boys from Syracuse. Okay, and we kind of hip hop remixed it, um, and there was street dance in it, and it was a fantastic, really, really energetic show. It was a summer musical that we done uh, for the Theatre Royal, and Nick. Like, w- what happened was is that the stalls, all of the seats in the stalls were taken out so that that was almost like a dance floor. It was almost like an open floor so people could stand and watch. So we had like a crowd. It was almost like we would perform into a, a, like a concert crowd every night sort of thing, as well as having the dress circle and the upper circle there. Um, but um, like we would, we would jump into this, we would jump into the show like with so much, so much love and energy and passion um, I've got to remember, oh, damn it. I, I lost my train of thought. Ah, I hate doing that because I, <laughs> I know I've got to pause and pick up. Um, help me, Kay. Nick, thank you. All right, I'm back on. Okay, cool. So all the seats, all the, all the seats are t- taken out of the stalls and, you know, there's a dance for et cetera. And Nick uh, came down as one of those students and he watched the show. And when he was watching the show, um, seeing all the street dance and the performance, well, that inspired him to start dancing, right? So he started going dance class after that. After he started dancing and started performing and started loving that, he started going acting. After he started going acting, he started getting a couple of roles where he's like, now, like I say, he's living in America, he's living in LA, he's got one of the best um, American accents I've heard, right? He just slips in so effortlessly. 
Um, he, he is humble, he is lovely, like, uh, and he's super, super duper talented. And he was like, if I didn't come to that show, I didn't know whether, like, I would have jumped on the creative wagon and whether I would have started dancing, whether I would have started doing acting and, you know, whether I would be here talking to you. So it was like a massive full circle with me and, Sip, uh, me and Nick. Um, so that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I literally believe that I should have been there. Like, Vanessa, she's such a, she's such a beautiful person, first and foremost. Um, there, there ain't too many airs or graces about her. She's down to earth. She's humble. Um, she gave, she gave a lot of time and a lot of energy. There was, she, her schedule was so jam packed that she could have easily every night said, all right, guys, I'm going to go back to my hotel and just, you know, learn my lines for tomorrow and go over what she never, you know, she never did. She did when she had to, but she was always out and she was always ready to kind of socialize with us all, you know, and she brought her mother and her mother is like mama G. She's amazing. I call her joy because that's all she does is bring joy. She walks into the room and she just giggles. She's like, <laughs> and she just brings joy, you know? So like getting the job and especially sitting around that table and feeling a part of it, feeling like, you know, like I was, you know, I, sh I should be here was massive for everything. You know, it was massive for, for, for everything within me. It was massive for my head. It was massive for my heart. It was massive for the energy that surrounded me. And it was through that. I mean, we had a great time on there, but it was through that, that I ended up getting a new agent come January, 2020. And like everything was, you know, cooking with gas and we were, we were soaring. And then we got Corona. 2020 lockdown quarantine stay in your house and do a zoom with lewis like that that's what happened that's what happened you know so um yeah it's all part of the journey my friend like it's all part of the journey man i'm uh, i was getting emotional listening to that man i'm so happy for you because i think you, you know brother. it's gonna do to see the trajectory of your career, man, it's, it's going to do mad things for you because, you know, obviously I know you from EastEnders, but believe it or not, in this house, I watch EastEnders. My girlfriend won't watch EastEnders with me. So I'm, so the man's watching, the woman won't watch. But, you know, when I mentioned, uh, when I was talking about today's podcast, I mentioned the princess switch. She's very familiar with that and so are a lot of people. So I imagine, you know, you're going to get a lot more notoriety flock towards you. I'm super excited to see that happen, man. It's going to be. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Lewis. Like, like I said, it, it, it's, it's tough. Um, there, is, there is kind of stereotypes in the UK. You know, if you're in a soap, they want you to stay in soaps. Or, you know, if you're a pop singer, they want you to stay as a pop singer. But you move out of the UK and everywhere else is very kind of multifaceted, multifaceted and, and, you know, are, are ready to jump through diff different layers. So, but for me, like I say, like it, it was, it, it was amazing, um, it was an amazing time and it was at an amazing time. So, and for me to knock off um, a Netflix original, uh, to do my first movie as well, and to be alongside, you know, Vanessa, the high school musical, Gabriella Queen herself, um, was amazing. You know, it really was amazing. And for us, that kind of, have that connection was really, really nice as well. Um, it's, it's crazy that you mentioned because Friday coming, I've got to do some um, additional voice recording, ADR, mm -hmm. for, um, for the film. So mm -hmm. um, now that lockdown is eased off a little bit, the wheels are getting into motion a little bit where maybe auditions and maybe work for everybody, not just including people in the industry, but it, it, it starts opening up a little bit. But I'm really excited to go down and and do the ADR and kind of, I, I will have to see a little bit of the film as well. So I'm excited to see that. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a great time and thank you for your love and your blessings, bro. I, I, I truly believe that it's gonna open another 17 doors down the road. So like, fingers crossed, touching wood, yeah. putting it out there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, this is the first of many. Yeah, man, from the East End to filming with, uh, you know, one of the biggest stars in the world. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing, man. And before, before I let you go, I, I just want to ask you one or two more questions uh, around okay. personal development. We mentioned books. Um, you know, tell me, man, what are some of the books that have impacted your life and, and what sort of stuff do you like to study? I mean, okay, so 
Okay. So let me start at the top. So listen, for 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 mind, for wellness, for growth, for lessons, um, for realizations, for reflections. Um my th that type of book reading and book studying started off with the secret. Mm. Uh is it Rhonda Byrne? I think her That's name it, is? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it started off with the secret, which basically opened up so there were certain things that I was doing um naturally that the secret pointed out. There was also other things within the secret. So the the, the basic lesson. Uh, or the through line lesson in the secret law of attraction right so so if you're putting out negativity or if you're putting out doubt or if you're putting out i can't or if you're putting out i won't you know um then it's not coming to you yeah simple it's not going to come to you because you're stopping it already and it's all negative and if you believe that all that's going to come to you is negative then that ends up happening you know you end up bumping your toe you end up not getting the car parking space you end up in the queue for an hour you end up getting frustrated about all those things as well. And then you get the, the, the call from your boyfriend where he's like, oh yeah, you know what? Tell the truth, miss, we're broken up. So you get all of the bad news in, in one time. Do you know what I mean? The same with like positivity. You, you put it out, the more it comes back to you. It, in anything, you want more love, put out more love. You want more respect, give more respect. You want more strength, give more strength. You want more hugs, give more hugs. Do you know what I mean? So law of attraction, it comes back to you. If you speak to people well and good and kindly and with your heart, then people will speak to you the same way. If, you, if you're blunt and sharp and, sh and short with people and you're ready to point the finger, then don't be surprised when that same uh, uh, energy comes back to you. That's, that same way of speaking comes back to you, you know? Um, so yeah, so secret was one of them. Um, one of the, an, another one of my pivotal books was uh, the Dalai Lama in his own words. It, the book's called In His Own Words. It's um, it's a simplified simplified version of the Dalai Lama and his teachings, uh, but written from one of his students. And he just he just he does it real real simply. But at this time, when I picked it up, when I started reading it, I was going through one of like my like my biggest breakups like so I, me and my ex it, it was like one of the biggest biggest breakups uh that i had and it was one of the times where um you know i did i didn't know whether i was going to get up you know i didn't know whether i was going to climb this mountain again i didn't know whether i wanted to climb the mountain again you know i drank brandy like ribena and you know i was smoking cigarettes like 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 i, I don't know what you know like like it was chewing gum like like there were tic tacs i don't know what but but that was my diet and i didn't have nothing else it wasn't like i had any food at that time it was just like brandy and cigarettes brandy and cigarettes brandy and cigarettes you know um so it was this book it was that book that helped me kind of again pick myself up and refocus and re-energize and, and look learn and listen to the lessons that are being shown you know um one of the lessons in this book that I always take with me is about suffering. So it says in the book that suffering um, can be a choice. It's a choice that you choose. You choose to suffer in and, and wallow in the, in, in the breakup energy, in the why me energy. You, you're, you're, choosing, you're choosing all of those, those things that are making you suffer. When you woke up in the morning, the sun was shining, the weather was sweet, but you chose to go through all of the things that you believe you're suffering from. That means by the time you got to the toilet to do your first wee wee, you was already, you're already, you're already on the negative, you're already on the downfall, you're already ready to give up. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, where, where was I? Do you know that? The book energy yes sorry so it's, it's me it's because sometimes i go off and i get no i scene. love it man like, it's so great my, content my, sorry Lou. it's my my sister's here she's helping me as well so anytime <laughs> that i drop off she's she's helping me with a name or or or, or, or something but yeah man like and energy is key so it's like uh, that that was so suffering so yes so that was one of the keys key lessons that i learned 
from 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 that book was that suffering is a choice. There was also a lot of other lessons, but that was the one that I took from that. The one that I'm currently on that has taken me from last year, and then I started it again uh, January this year. It's called the Motivation Manifesto, mm-hmm. and it's from Brendan Burchard. Okay, mm-hmm. Brendan Burchard is a great person to follow on Insta as well. Um, he has he has great day-to-day check-in advice to kind of keep you focused, keep you on your game and to, to not keep you drunk amongst the haze of nastiness and negativity. He helps shake that off and get you to remember what's true. Um, but yeah, so he, his, his book called The Motivation Manifesto um, is a fantastic book. What it done was it helped um, it helped open my mind. It helped, it helped rebuild my spirit. It helped rebuild my heart. It helped remind me of all of the qualities that I do have. It helped remind me of all of the power that I do have. It, it helped me remind me of how much understanding that I have or how much understanding that I give, you know. Um, it, it, it showed me that sometimes being too humble in life can be a detriment. Sometimes, you know, going around and walking around like the mouse all the time and being it's okay it's okay no you know it's all right you can notice me if you want but sometimes you know you need to walk around like the lion and let people see you and know that you're the lion and know that you're strong you don't have to you don't have to be aggressive you don't have to show everybody by giving everyone an arm wrestle you just need to walk like a lion you know what i mean and present yourself with that confidence yes i am an actor yes i am successful yes i can do yes there ain't nothing that you you know what i mean there ain't nothing that you can't chuck my way that I can't handle you know if, if whatever you need I, I got for you I'm, I got you brother you know so every, everything in life happens for a reason everything and we know this you know and sometimes you might not know what that reason is at the time but give it a year give it six months and you'll realize that that happened then to teach you that lesson for the reason right now so um yeah, so the Motivation Manifesto is the <clears throat> last motivation book that I read. But right now, yeah, I'm going, uh, I'm on to Stanislavski's um, character building. So I'm reading Stanislavski right now. Mm-hmm. Um, building a character is called. And again, within acting, there's a lot of psychology. There's a lot of body language. There's a lot of um, traits and human, hu- human unconscious ticks and stuff that we do that that is really helping me tap into but if you think it's all the same like it's all mind mindfulness wellfulness the the more i can understand in acting and through human behavior through certain gestures what they mean what tones mean what looks mean um that helps me in my day-to-day you know so i can give a better tone i can give a better energy the same way i can receive a better tone receive a bit an energy so that is what i'm on right now love it man and um you know i've read brendan's high performance habits so you know that yes I, yes so uh I'm, i'll definitely jump into that one and uh man it's it's great to hear you read so much personal development it's something we love so you know i'll even i'll follow up with an email i'll give you some recommendations i think it'd be really good for awesome. you man i'd even send them to you in the post i i, I want you to read them that bad man so well uh, i I, I literally, I, I, I love feeding my brain like that. Like um, when I started in January reading Brendan's book, I tried to make, make uh, like a disciplined effort that I, I would read at least 10 pages a day. Yeah. So it was like food and it was like training. And then after I read those 10 pages, it was like, okay, cool. Well, how can I apply this to my everyday life? You know, how can I apply this to going to the post office and dealing with that guy, you know, like, how can I use this and, and use it to improve my everyday being, you know? So my, my friend, like, I love them. Like, and the one thing about reading books and investing is it's nothing, it's nothing that anybody can force you to do. Nobody can force you to read the book. If you, wanna, if you want the answers, there's the book. Do you know what I mean? You have to read it and you have to answer your own personal questions. A lot of people run, a, run a, away from reading wellness books because inherently, subconsciously, they know that they're going to have to face 
uh, themselves in the mirror, face their own actions, and face the responsibility of the things that they've done to create the situation that they are in. So some people don't want to do that, so they prefer, like in the Matrix, to live in ignorance and kind of carry on, you know? So it's, I really encourage, like, some people think he's wishy-washy. Some people think it's, ah, oh, it's all, it's like fortune-telling kind of language and it's all kind of mystical and look we all need wellness we 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 all need um understanding and we all need somewhere to kind of get our answers from or to invest in and to get self-awareness and to build self-awareness you know so nobody can force you to read like i say so the, you have to know what you're doing when you pick up a book. The major majority of the time that I pick up a book, I do not read it within the first six to 12 months of me buying it. Because my books, when I pick a book up, it's for a reason. It's like, okay, it's time for this book now. All right, it's time for this book. It's not let me, I can't just rattle through books just to get through them so I can talk to you in two days, Lewis. You know what I mean? About whatever book that you sent me. When you send me a book or when I'm, when I'm reading a book, and especially when it's a wellness book, I will read 10 pages and I'll let it digest. And I'll try and, like I say, use it. And then I'll jump back on the next 10 and then I'll eat another bit and then I'll eat another little bit. I'll, sometimes I go back on the chapter, read the whole chapter again because I was like, oh, what was that? Let me reinforce that lesson that I just learned or I just heard, you know what I mean, or recognized. So it's something that I encourage to everybody. And even if you ain't a reader, it's great when you're in amongst friends and then you can, you can share the knowledge that you do have. Do you know what I mean? You can give little, little treats, little biscuits of, of, of the knowledge that you have gained by, by reading a book or so. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Motivation Manifesto is one of, I've recommended that to nearly everybody nearly everybody i recommend it to my little sister i recommended it to vanessa vanessa's got it i recommended it to nick um i recommended it to my best friend um I, you know i don't rec i don't recommend it to everybody because it is for everybody but i don't recommend it to everybody i will recommend it to those that i feel can that need it and can use it at the at the time and at the moment that they're in right then so, um, yeah, man, it's, it is a really, it was fantastic to kind of just re-energize and reinvigorate everything that what I was about and kind of push it forward again. Fantastic. But it's great. You have to do it. Yeah, man, definitely. And uh, I love what you said about, you know, you know, rushing through the book because I'm reading um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill at the moment. And at the start, right. of, the, at the start of the book, he says there's, there's one rule to the book and that is you you're not allowed to read more than one chapter a night because, you know, it gives you time to reflect on it. So I think what you said there is really important. And, um, you know, I think you've contributed so, so much value to this podcast already. And oh, I have you, one more question for you. We've talked a lot about okay. messages and lessons. If every person in the world was tuned into the same frequency and you had the chance to deliver one lesson or one short message, and everyone in the world was going to hear it, what would Ricky Norwood's message to the world be? It, it would be, you know, it would be believe in yourself. Belief in yourself is more powerful than the words coming out of your mouth. Like, don't let doubt or fear or delay be the demons that hold you back. Don't aim for the glitz and the glamour because it's never as glamorous and it's never as glittery as you believe it to be. It's, that's just a facade. It's a fantasy. Go into everything with intention and purpose and what you get out of it will, will be, it, it, it will be worth more than an item of clothing that you spent stupid money on or a pair of trainers or a pair of shoes, you know? Um, invest in you. Um, you do have the time as well. It's like that, that as, a, as, as, as a quote, like you do have the time. I hear a lot of people say, uh, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. Or I ain't got the time to do that. I ain't got the time to read. I ain't got... You do have the time. 
You do. Doesn't matter how busy you are, you do have the time. It's how you use it. So use it to benefit you. Don't let it be an excuse. Use it to benefit you. Um, and be grateful. Be grateful for the little things that you have and the, the, the more will come. And, Love it. Love it, man. You know, yeah. So yeah, be grateful for the little things that you have. More will come. More will come. Where can everyone listening um, find, find you on socials and get more of Ricky? Uh, well, on Twitter, you can get me at Ricky J Norwood. Uh, I've got the blue tick on Twitter. Um, so you'll find me easily there. On Instagram, I'm at um, official Ricky Norwood. Um, I've only been on a short amount of time. So there ain't no blue tick, but there's about, well, you know it's me. You know, I think there's about 22,000 or something like that for, uh, followers there. So you'll see it's me. You'll see the um, Star Wars jumper that I put out for May the 4th and the dancing videos and stuff. So you'll see that that's me there. But um, yeah, you can grab me there as well. Um, and then, like I say, Netflix come the end of the year. That's another place you can grab me. So um, yeah, man, like just stay in touch. Uh, keep sending love. I love all the people's messages that they always send on Twitter and on Insta. Um, and keep that positive uh, energy going. Uh, Lewis, yourself, I want to thank you for inviting me on as well, my friend. And like, I, I wish you so much love and success in everything that you're doing. Um, you're doing it again for, for the love and because it's something that you need to do. It's not something to be, I can see. Maybe, maybe Joe Rogan is the end goal, but I know that's not tomorrow's goal. I know that's not why you got in. You got in because you have a passion for knowledge and a passion for understanding and a passion for speaking to people on a human level, on, a, on the best level. So again, thank you for doing what you're doing and putting out the platform and the podcast that you do. I appreciate that, man. 100 episodes in, uh, over 100 episodes recorded. And this might be one of my favorites. So uh, thank you for the, uh, the value you've given, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Awesome. I'll, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I'll let you get back to your banana bread now, man. <laughs> Listen, I wish I could send you some. I wish I, well, when we're out of lockdown, Lewis, all right, it'll be in the post and on its way. Okay? I'll call you up on that, man. I'll call you up on that. You make sure you do. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll send you the links and that when it's out, man. Uh, you know, have a great day and uh, I'll speak to you again soon, all right? Thank you so much, Lewis, man. You take care and sending you and all the family loads and loads of love, all right? Love it, man. All the best. Take care, man. Love, 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 love.